Hello everybody and welcome to marketing your new online store. If you're just launching your online storefront, I'm sure you're chomping at the bit to start making sales and we're going to talk about the various ways you can use digital marketing to do just that. In today's webinar, we'll start by meeting our digital marketing experts, then we'll quickly go over each marketing channel so you'll have a foundational understanding of what we mean when we refer to things like uh, SEO, PPC feeds, and then each specialist will share tips for using each channel effectively. And last but not least, we'll answer your questions. So go ahead and start typing those questions into the Q&A box in the webinar software. We're going to have a lengthy Q&A at the end of the webinar, but we might get a chance to answer some questions during the presentation as well. So let's start by meeting the webinar team. Hello again, my name is Allison and I'm going to moderate today's webinar. I'm a search marketing manager here at Volusia and I'm passionate about strategy, content, and helping small to medium businesses outwit larger corporations. I'm originally from Central California, um, but I've been in Texas for over eight years now and started spontaneously saying y'all a few years ago. So it's a done deal. I'm a Texan. It wasn't spontaneous at all. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. My name is Sean, and I'm the paid search specialist for today. I've been at Evolution for four years. I've worked specifically with shopping feeds and product listing ads for the last two. I'm certified in all things Google, AdWords, Analytics, and Shopping, and I'm a big fan about using data-driven marketing automation strategies to help online businesses. When I'm not behind my two monitors at work, I'll be out uh, hiking around in the green belt here in Austin, Texas. Hey, I'm Kavi. I'm one of the SEO specialists here at Volusion. My background is actually in publishing, but a few years ago I took my writing skills and turned those plus my love of data into a career in digital marketing. And yes, you are reading that last bullet point correctly. I've never seen Jaws, The Shining, or Groundhog Day. And I'm Samantha. I am an SEO specialist and one of the resident social media gurus here at Volusion. I recently just moved to Texas from Long Island, New York, and I have about four years working in social media, SEO, and marketing. I've had experience dealing with clients in a multitude of industries, from fashion to industrial fasteners. Oh, and a fun fact, I hate cilantro. Apparently they say it's a genetic thing. Interesting. All right. So now that we've met our team of experts, let's talk about the different marketing channels. Um, we'll go, we can start with the text ads that often appear on the right-hand side or in the top of search results. Excellent, Allison. That's going to be me. So pay-per-click ads are going to be those hyperlinked text ads that appear at the top or side of search result pages as you can see in the highlighted box to the, to the right here. Uh, these ads are the most ubiquitous of the web, and if you haven't clicked on them, you've definitely seen them before. These are going to be really short ads with only two lines of text, and you use targeted keywords to drive really qualified traffic to your store. Keywords are words and phrases that match your ads to the terms people are searching for. And from this example, you'll see that we're searching for telescopes, and the ad experience matches that. You're only going to be paying for ads when someone clicks onto it and visits your website, rather than just having to pay a set rate. And uh, lastly, PPC is a great marketing technique to oust your competition quickly because your ads can very quickly appear on the front page. All right, and SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. It's a set of strategies that can affect the organic or unpaid results that make up the majority of your average search results page. You can see where those organic results begin for our telescope example here inside this green box. So unlike PPC or shopping feeds, SEO is a slow and steady process. Results don't happen overnight, best practices are always changing, but when results do appear, they can provide a lasting value long after you've started your SEO campaign. So by performing a few technical changes to your website and featuring fresh, compelling content on your landing pages, you can help the search engines recognize what each page is about and why it should be considered worthy of appearing in the search results. One thing to keep in mind, this is a common misconception that a lot of people have starting out with SEO. Um, SEO is not about tricking or gaming the search engines into ranking your site higher than a competitor's. It's about working along with the search engine's sophisticated algorithms to increase your site's traffic and revenue. Excellent. Moving away from organic and back to paid search for just a moment, shopping feeds, or data feeds as I'll be calling them, are image-based ads that appear at the top or right-hand side of the search result pages. Because they have an image, they can really stand out, especially on mobile devices, and do a great job of showing off your products. These ads are pretty simple and only provide the product image, the product title, its price, and your domain name. PPC, um, the, the text ads we just saw, can advertise services or locations like plumbers in your areas or restaurants nearby. 
shopping feeds are a little bit different because they're gonna be an e-commerce first type of advertising. That means that you can only show products. Lastly, these ads are not keyword based like PPC. So you don't have to research any keywords or do much extra work. Instead, your ads are gonna be served to clients based on uh, Google matching your products with search terms. The last marketing tool we're gonna to be discussing is social media. And social media doesn't have its own place in the search results, but it definitely has a special place in the consumer's heart. The whole idea of social media is to make your customers love you by showing them how valuable they are. This mutual respect fosters trust between the customer and the brand, which is why about 81% of small businesses use social media. When you're a small business, customer relations and business reputation on social media are very important. In fact, shoppers are more likely to make a purchase after reading something they saw on social media, so you want to make sure that you're representing yourself well. When it comes down to it, Social media is an avenue per, for promotion, but it's also an effective customer service tool and a great way for brands to get noticed. It does not discriminate by the size of your business. Small and large brands both have a chance for success on social media. Oh, and as a bonus, it allows you to direct people to your online store. Alright, so let's talk about the strategies and tactics you can use today to start marketing your online store. We've broken each channel into three parts. Overview, tips, and takeaways will also be providing you with some resources. Um, but before we do just that, I want to give you some homework for tonight. If you do one thing today, please install Google Analytics on your store. This way you can begin gathering data immediately and track your store's performance over time. Volusion offers some easy do-it-yourself instructions linked here, and uh, the Volusion tech support team can certainly assist you with this, but trust me, it's literally copy and pasting. So you can do it, and it's free. Um, but if this is too intimidating, we also offer an implementation service. But again, it's copy and pasting, it's free. I promise you, you can do it on your own. Which is great, because the data Google Analytics provides is priceless. You'll learn everything from visitor demographics and behavior to which channels are driving your traffic and conversions. So you'll want to monitor your traffic data over time so you can make informed marketing decisions in the future. We recommend that you explore analytics in bite-sized pieces just to avoid being overwhelmed. Um, there are a bunch of wonderful free tools out there to help you learn the ropes. I recommend starting with this metrics webinar and Google's free training resources. All of these links are not clickable now, but they will be when we send you out the slideshow after the webinar concludes. All right, so let's get to why you're really here, marketing your store and driving sales. We're going to start with pay-per-click, also known as PPC. Excellent. Thanks, Allison. As mentioned earlier, if you are a new store just getting started or even an older established store, PPC is a cornerstone to any marketing strategy. Getting started with pay-per-click advertising can seem a bit daunting, but it's really not too much to it. You're going to begin the process by creating a campaign and then subdivide that campaign into something called ad groups. Many of you may already be familiar with AdWords and have know this, but ad groups are the subdivision where you actually create the ads add in your two witty lines of text, as well as your call to action. This is also where you're going to be setting your keywords. PPC is going to be great to bring in highly qualified traffic, and a reason for that is just how flexible that it is. These ad types can change very quickly to accommodate store changes like a flash sale, as well as for seasons and holidays like Black Friday or the Christmas shopping season. There really is a ton of flexibility with what you can do. You can raise and lower daily budgets with a few clicks, test new ad text, and add in new keywords. PPC is going to be great for marketing new stores because you can direct the customer to any part of your store. This means that the landing page, the first page that a customer sees after clicking your ad, can be the home page, an article, a category, or even a product page, anywhere on your site. Um, there will, of course, be better places to send them than not, so you can try out a, different, a lot of different things and test a lot. So focus on popular categories and higher margin products. Um, it's always a great place to start. Lastly, it's going to be great for gathering quality data about your store's traffic. Because the data is tangible and quick, you can make a lot of great decisions um, that contribute as you continue to build your store. So let's go ahead and consider some tips um, to get started. First, you're going to want to ensure that your store is presentable. Take your customers to an attractive and functional website. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect and you're never going to be truly finished building your store, but you still want your new customers to have a really good experience when they get there. Second, you really want to organize your categories and subcategories well. Think about your online store like a real store. Different aisles are different categories and different shelves are the different subcategories. So you're going to want to separate your products in an appropriate way. If you sell apparel, you want to separate that from your sports equipment and gear. If you have men's and 
men's and women's lines of clothes, make sure that they're not all jumbled together. Um, for an example, let's look at uh, considering gift baskets. Uh, if you sell gift baskets, this would be your aisle in the different types. Baby gift baskets, movie gift baskets would be their own subcategories and their own shelves. For PPC, if someone is searching for wedding gift baskets, you want to show them products specific to that search. It's going to be more qualified and they're likely to enjoy the uh, experience a little bit better. Uh, third tip about PPC is try to keep your CPCs, your cost per click bids, as low as you can while still getting the traffic that you want. Um, if you're just getting started, a rookie mistake that I see far too often is that you're going to be overpaying for traffic because you want people to get in the door. Instead, try to slow it down and focus on building a sustainable and successful campaign. Um, with this, experiment with ad position. It doesn't always really pay, nudge, nudge, to be in the first spot. Uh, you're going to want to see a good ROI, a return on investment, at a lower spot without spending as much. So just don't overspend when you don't have to. Um, and with that, try to be more specific than too broad. Uh, you don't necessarily want anyone coming to your store. I know it may seem like that, but instead you're trying to advertise people who are looking to buy your specific products. Uh, PPC doesn't take a shotgun approach to getting people into the door. And uh, a way to avoid this shotgun approach is to add negative keywords into your account. Uh, negative keywords are the complete opposite of keywords. Uh, there are words and phrases that you don't want to show up for. Common examples include the words cheap, use, or places like Craigslist and Walmart. Uh, these people who are searching for gift basket Walmart already have a destination in mind and you don't want to pay for clicks along the way when someone may just be searching and browsing around. As a final takeaway, I want to say that PPC is going to be a great way to meet a new audience through compelling text ads. Um, it brings really quality traffic to your site very quickly, but before you start paying for traffic, remember to have your site in its best form. Structure your categories and subcategories as best they can be to align your products with your campaigns and your ad groups. And finally, try to offer some stuff that's going to stand out from your competition. Well, I've added a few little resources for you as well. Um, when this uh, slide deck and webinars are made available after we, uh, we wrap up, these few little hyperlinks include the AdWords Keyword Planner that will help you uh, give an idea of how much you'll be paying for your keywords, as well as some new ones you can add to your account. I've also included a list of few blogs and webinars that we've done here at Volusion that give you ideas of how to start, as well as one of my favorite articles about PPC strategies for procrastinators. This article is about getting started in the holiday season in like November, but the basic steps uh, provide you the ability to create a, a brief skeleton and the same type of structure you'd be doing when you're just getting started. So I definitely recommend that third link. Awesome, thank you, Sean. Um, and just as a happy reminder, as questions come up you know, regarding PPC SEO feeds, please send those on in. We're, we're, no question is too basic, we'll tackle them all. All right, so now let's take a minute to transition from the paid side of things to what we call the natural or organic search results. Kavi will give us an overview of SEO strategies for getting your store featured in Google's natural or organic search results. Okay, thank you, Allison. Uh, SEO is a great search marketing tactic for e-commerce stores in almost any industry. Search engine visibility is an absolute must for getting brands discovered, and that's true whether you sell sundresses or networking cables or anything in between. No matter what your site is about, you're going to need some unique and relevant content to signal to your customers and also to the search engines what you're selling and why it's great. Before beginning an SEO overhaul, though, you do want to do some thinking about customer behavior. Make sure your site looks and feels like a place where people want to shop and actually make purchases, as Sean said before, because the search engines can tell how much time visitors spend on your site and how often they just leave the store without buying anything. So think about things like, does your site use a responsive template? Will customers have a good shopping experience if they're on a desktop or a mobile platform? Those are important considerations for the search engines, so they should be important to you as well. The way the search engines treat your site and, as a result, your traffic and your revenue will improve the more customers interact meaningfully with your online store. Uh, in my opinion, the best thing about SEO is that it costs nothing but your time and your brain power. When it's done right, it's a totally free way to improve your presence in the search results and to attract new customers. SEO can definitely be time consuming, but the time and energy you spend is definitely worth the return. I saw a recent digital marketing study that shows 88% of all shoppers do some research online before making a purchase, even if that purchase ends up happening in a brick and mortar store instead of online. 
So in order for potential customers to discover your brand during that online research period, they have to be able to find you using channels like Google Search. Think about the actual phrases that your ideal customer is typing into Google. Think about uh, what makes your brand or your products unique, and then make a list of keyword phrases that are specifically relevant to your business. Incorporate those phrases into the content that appears on your product pages and your category descriptions. Um, when they're compiling their search results, search engines consider a landing page's relevance and authority uh, within the industry, as well as the user behavior that surrounds it. So like I said, make sure your website's navigation is user-friendly and that your content really reflects your industry expertise. So here are some tips uh, that you can use going into your SEO campaign. Where There are two basic pieces involved in SEO. There's on-page and off-page optimization. On-page optimization includes things like title tags, meta descriptions, and H1 tags, and all of those are things that can be easily edited in the admin area of your Volusion store. Uh, for your on-page optimization to be complete, though, you also want to include about 150 words of unique, relevant content on each landing page. This content should describe what can be found on the page and should contain compelling marketing messaging as well to push people to buy but you should not just stuff in a bunch of keywords so that it sounds unnatural. That's a big no-no for the search engines. Uh, on to off-page optimization. This focuses more on how other influencers, like other websites and online thought leaders, interact with your site. When you earn a link from another website, assuming that site isn't spammy or totally unrelated to what you're selling, it's kind of like they're giving you a vote for your website to signal that you're also relevant and authoritative. So the best way to earn meaningful links to your site is, you guessed it, by creating content that people will want to link to. Helpful original content that demonstrates your expertise tends to earn the most attention. Write stuff that people want to read and share. This can take the form of a blog or some well-researched infographics or even a how-to video series if you have the resources to put something like that together. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that earning links can be a bit tricky because the search engines have several rules that you have to adhere to in order to avoid harmful penalties that can kill your search rankings uh, and therefore your traffic as well. So for example, paying for links is a major no-no. Links have to come in organically and actually be earned in order to be considered legitimate. Uh, so to wrap up our tips, it's pretty clear that having a good content strategy in place is absolutely critical for SEO. And I know this can seem intimidating, but it really doesn't have to be complicated. The most important thing to keep in mind is uh, what your customers are searching for throughout the sales cycle. So to give you an example, um, I had an SEO client who sold organic skincare. So to draw in customers who were in that research phase of the sales cycle, we created a resource library that included um, explanations of some of the more exotic ingredients that she was using in her products. But we also put a lot of focus on their individual product descriptions so that customers who were pretty much ready to buy would know exactly how to use that particular face wash or a moisturizer or whatever they were looking at. So as I said before, you want to think about the terms and phrases that your customers are using and incorporate those as naturally as possible into your on-site content, whether that's in your product descriptions or a short paragraph that appears on a category page or a useful blog post that's connected to your site. The right content uh, not only helps you make sales and attract customers through the search engines, it can also help you earn those valuable links that I mentioned earlier. And one more thing to note, uh, Sam will talk about this a bit more uh, as well, a little bit later on, but you also want to consider how your social media strategy can support your SEO. Make sure your social media profiles are optimized with the correct business information and some good keywords for discovery on those platforms as well. Plus, if you've written some really great content, avenues like Facebook and Twitter and your other social media profiles are the most natural way to share all of that. So our main takeaway for SEO, uh, SEO is a long-term process that can earn exponential results. It requires patience and thoughtfulness, but it's the single most important way to signal your relevance and authority to the search engines, and therefore to your potential customers. The earlier you start thinking about your SEO strategy, the more quickly you should start seeing increases in traffic and revenue, which is what we all want. So here are a few SEO resources for you to get started. When you're doing your keyword research, uh, Google Trends, which is linked here, and even just carrying out your own searches can help you discover what terms your customers are searching for. 
There might be customers in a certain area of the country using a term for one of your products that might not come to mind immediately for you. And that's a great way to discover things like that. Um, Volusion and some of our other favorite online experts have written lots of great blog posts and created tons of videos and webinars on SEO best practices. So there are some links to those here as well, including our upcoming webinar next month uh, called Tailoring Product Pages for SEO and Feed Success. That's going to be on August 11th, and we uh, will have a sign up for that coming soon. And for some more information and instructions on adjusting things like meta tags in the admin area of your store, I'm including a link to our knowledge base overview of Volusion specific SEO features. Uh, this is Allison again. Uh, my background is also in SEO, and uh, I can attest that it's a powerful long term strategy. Um, I also noticed that many times when I started out with merchants, a question I often received was, okay, I like that I'm showing up in the natural search results, but how do I get the pictures up top or on the side? I want to be, I want to see my products there. Um, so I'm going to loop Sean back in right now to talk about how you can do just that. Take it away, Sean. All right, Alison. So the images at the top of the page are often going to be a part of Google Shopping when they're not part of the image slideshow. Data feeds or shopping feeds are a spreadsheet um, that has all of your product's pertinent information. And it can be as simple as a CSV that you've exported from your store and updated the column headers, or something a bit more advanced like XML. Um, you can take your store's data and submit that to Google for their approval um, so that they're going to show your ads. Um, we had a question that came in from John that says, what if your product is a service? How do I take advantage of shopping with such a product? Well, this is a bit of the trick. Because Google is so specific in what it requires, they can only be products. And a lot of this is because they've got so many required fields and services. They're really trying to create a window shopping experience, which is um, part of the benefit and also part of the detriment of Google Shopping. So John, what you'll want to do is focus on PPC. And we'll follow up in the Q&A a little bit after to tell you what to do with that. Uh, back to shopping feeds for a little bit. There's going to be so many required fields. Um, they include obvious ones, such as the product title, the product description, the weight, um, the required fields in the Volusion dashboard. There's also going to be ones that they uh, are looking for as well, such as product manufacturer and UPC code in Google category. Um, if a product doesn't meet these requirements, it's going to be disapproved um, and won't be pulled into the data feed. Or if it is taken up, it will be rejected after the fact. I mentioned a little bit about the window shopping aspect of Google Shopping. And a handy thing about using data feeds as part of your marketing strategy is that they appear in search results and in uh, shopping aggregators. This means that your ads get to double dip where they appear. Um, and like a PPC, Google Shopping campaigns are going to be created through AdWords. Let's go ahead and just jump into some tips really quickly. Um, because shopping feeds are so uh, data driven, as is said by the, the name itself, data feeds, what you'll really want to do is start by optimi optimizing the product page first. Um, because the landing page, that first page that you see after a client clicks onto an ad is the product page, your customers won't have the same context as they would from finding the product through searching through your website, your on-page search. Instead, they're taken directly to it instead. So your customers don't have the context of knowing if the item is in a necklace category or a bracelet category if they're searching for the, something like a 36 inch chain. Instead, your product title should include 36 inch chain, necklace made out of silver and gold. Um, something more descriptive that provides them all the information that they need to be looking for. Um, because the product page, uh, because it's just the product page, just make sure that it's descriptive and thorough don't have any thin content. Um, just the more robust it's going to be, the better Google uh, will the more likely Google will show your ads, as well as the SEO benefits that Copy talked about. Um, next, and this tip may seem pretty obvious, but you really need to monitor your campaigns. Um, feeds aren't a set it and forget it. And in fact, if you don't submit a new data feed every 30 days, Google is going to automatically expire your product listings. And uh, you want to make sure that any changes you make in the store should be reflected in the data feed itself. If your items fluctuate in stock or if you're changing the price point and taking things on sales, reflect that in the data feed so your potential customers are getting the best experience possible. If you put something on sale, you're going to want to show the sale price to incentivize people to come to your store and not your competitors. So keep your data really, really fresh. Um, talking about monitoring your campaign, use the data you get from AdWords and identify those products which are best performing. Call back to what Allison said about setting up Google Analytics. But if you can know the products which are performing better, you can increase their bids a wee bit, or you can even uh, 
optimize your product title to ensure that you're getting a, a larger impression showing your ads are serving a more uh, qualified group of people. The cost per click of uh, shopping feed ads are generally lower um, than um, PPC ads. So try to find a really good price point. Um, of course, there's going to be no size fits all, but just start lower and slowly increase your bids until you find the uh, return on ad spend that you're really, really looking for. Um, the biggest important thing here is just consider your ROI, your return on investment, and where your window is. Um, lastly, and probably most importantly about shopping feeds, is have a really good product image. Um, if you're a drop shipper and all of your images match that of your competition, it's going to be really hard to stand out. So when you can, use different angles, take your own photos, use really high quality images, and make sure that the image just isn't pixelated uh, and just depicts your product very well. If you have multiple product images, please, please include those to the product page itself. The more interactive your customer will be on the page, the longer they spend, the more time they glean information about the product, they likely they are to check out. So lastly, as a big takeaway, you've, you're working really hard if you're still building your store uh, to, to build out your store's inventory, so show it off with data feeds. Using comparison shopping engines allows you to show off your entire inventory through image ads to online shoppers. With so many potential ads, you can reach customers far and wide. So structure your product information correctly and use these type of campaigns to show off your best brands and the customers will find you after that. Some resources I've included as well is all those rules and requirements from Google. The product recommendations and requirements are going to be very, very helpful if you ever wonder why isn't this product showing up? Uh, you may discover that it's apparel, it doesn't have uh, the color and size attributes, or you may find that the tax and shipping information isn't there. So Google has a great, great support documentation. I've also included some videos and blogs and webinars that I've created as well as some other people on the team that help really um, define how to set up uh, shopping fees as well as how to get started at uh, times of moving very quickly and what you can do when your price point isn't super competitive. So that's a pretty handy one of some kind of side techniques you can really do. So, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Okay, and last but not least, we cannot forget social media marketing, which is a very cost-effective way for a new store to build their following. And Sam can tell us a little bit about that. Thanks, Allison. I love social media. I think it's sometimes overlooked, but it's actually one of the best marketing tools out there. And as Kavi said earlier, it works hand-in-hand -hand with SEO. It can boost traffic to your website, improve your brand authority, and enhance customer loyalty. Not to mention, it works well with a multitude of industries, from fashion to food and everything in between. And there's a wide array of social media networks out there. Many of them are industry specific. The vastness of the social media landscape makes it easier for people to find networks where their brands can thrive. So while I bet your first inclination is to choose Facebook, it's important not to discount others such as Twitter, Pinterest, Polyvore, Reddit, or even Instagram. So for instance, if you're in the fashion industry, Pinterest or Polyvore might work better than say, I don't know, Twitter. Um, you don't have to be active on every channel all at once, so choose one or two networks to devote your time to. It's better to be active on one or two platforms than inconsistent on all of them. Not only is social media extremely versatile, but it's also a cost-effective marketing strategy. Because guess what? Creating a social media page is free. So to get started, the only thing required is your time. And there's tons of social media networks out there. As I mentioned before, I've listed some with some of the most popular networks. So you can um, use those to promote your brand and interact with customers. You may be familiar with some of them, or perhaps even all of them, but I thought it would be helpful to see a wide variety of your options. We've got the big guns that are very well known, like Facebook and Twitter, and then we have some more visual, lesser known ones like Pinterest and Instagram. However, if you are in a very specific industry, it might be worth taking some time to look at networks that are created specifically for your niche. For example, House. It's a social network for interior designers and brands in the real estate or housing market. Um, you know, so you can use anything that relates specifically to your audience. And that's pretty much the main point. You want to be on the network where your audience interacts most. It's also important to note that like SEO, social media success takes time. But social media can also help enhance your search visibility. To give your brand the best chance of being discovered, you want to begin by optimizing each social network you decide to use. So what this means is filling out all of the fields in the about sections of your social pro profiles by using relevant keywords and search terms. However, 
please do not duplic publish duplicate content. Don't just copy and paste content from the About Us section on your website. Instead, try to write similar, new, keyword-rich content that shows what your store is all about. And if you have a store with a brick and mortar location, make sure to add your address and other spe locally specific information as well. Social media is also the best way to engage with customers and potential audiences. You can see what people are talking about by using relevant hashtags and join those conversations on Facebook and Twitter. This will showcase your authority and your relevance within your industry. And please don't neglect your followers. They love receiving replies. So make sure that you're always replying to those messages or comments to keep the conversation going because social media can actually be your best customer service tool. And last but not least, if you have a little bit of wiggle room with your budget, social advertising opportunities like Facebook ads and boosted posts can really help your strategy. Plus, they're reasonably priced. With Facebook, it's a pay-to-play environment. So we recommend using social advertising to reach new customers and grow your presence online. Facebook ads can be used to garner page likes or to drive traffic to your website. However, if this seems a little bit overwhelming to you, you can choose to boost individual posts right on your timeline to reach more people. These are really easy to use and can serve your ads to large numbers of people for a minimal cost. The best part about the boosted posts is that they can also allow you to target your audience using a variety of filters. So this means you can serve ads to people who already like your page and their friends, or create a custom audience by targeting specific locations, genders, interests, or keywords. Now you may be asking, how do I go about doing all of this? I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, but don't panic. I'm going to share a few tips and some social media best practices to make that a little easier. So first, posting regularly is extremely important because it lets your customers and your followers know that you are active. I would suggest spending about 15 minutes per day posting and engaging. Um, creating a weekly or monthly content calendar can be a huge help. This will keep you organized so you won't have to spend too much time thinking about what to post every day. We recommend posting around three to five times per week to keep that content fresh and you don't want to clog the timeline with too many of your posts. Speaking of posts, you have to get to know your customers. Um, learn about your audience to find out what, what type of posts they like. Once you have an idea of what type of content they like, make sure you aren't overloading them with too many self-promotional product posts. Instead, try creating your own unique and engaging content. You know, the stuff that people will want to share. Don't just post links to your products. We tend to use the 80-20 rule. About 80% of your posts should relate to your brand's industry and your target audience, and the other 20% should be self-promotional and used to introduce introduce sales or giveaways or contests or anything like that. Try to use your own images if you can or create them on your own using canva.com or other free design tools which I will list later. Um, and remember here unique content is key. Unique images can also be used for promotions. Promotions such as sales, giveaways, or other contests that I mentioned before can enhance customer engagement and help you gain new customers. We recommend using those boosted posts to promote all of your exclusive deals, contents, or even new product launches. Another tip is to always track your success. To get a good idea if your posts are working, dig into the Facebook Insights or another network's analytics to see how well your posts perform. This will help you figure out what type of posts your audience likes and what prompts them to take action. You can use this information to identify your strongest performing posts and recreate similar posts to garner higher levels of engagement. And finally, as I mentioned before, if you decide to delegate some of your marketing budget to social advertising, don't forget to monitor those campaigns. Ads must be monitored periodically to ensure that they are performing and you're getting the most bang for your buck. I recommend checking them bi-weekly. You can edit the copy, you can edit the target filters or images on poor performing ads to see if they begin to work. And this also goes for the boosted posts. Make sure that you look at your results after the, the paid campaign ends to see how your audience responded to that post. This can help you decide how you want to refine your targeting the next time you want to boost something. So what's the main takeaway regarding social? Well, when it comes down to it, social media management is the best way to get to know your target audience, drive traffic, and engage with potential customers. It requires patience, creativity, and the willingness to learn. 
And while growing a social media presence can be a long-term process, it allows businesses of all sizes to increase awareness, boost engagement, drive traffic to online stores, and prompt followers to take action. That being said, we've compiled a list of resources that can help you save some time and further educate you on social media best practices. These include free tools that can help you create amazing shareable images, along with a few apps that can help you schedule posts during your busiest days. I've even included some guides that provide information on how to best drive engagement and get the most out of your social campaigns. The last resource there is a helpful tutorial on how to create your own Facebook ads if you decide that that's something that you want to explore more. And also keep an eye out for our upcoming webinar on September 1st about how to craft a social media strategy for the holidays. It's going to be full of great information, so be sure to keep checking for sign-up dates. All right, thank you, Sam. So that rounds out the four digital marketing channels we wanted to cover today. And the questions have literally been pouring in. So without further ado, let's get to those questions. We might start with um, paid search, since that was the first um, section we went over. Um, sure, yeah. I'll talk a little bit more about PPC if I can. So, Maureen, you asked, uh, can you please explain a little bit more about negative keywords? Why would I want to attract someone who wants free, cheap items when I sell quality goods? I'm sorry I wasn't clear. Negative keywords will do the exact opposite of that. When you create a new campaign, you will set your keywords for your goods and the products that you offer. And the negative keywords, which go in a slightly separate location, are going to be the ones to uh, disapprove your ad from. If someone searches for a cheap car and you're selling cars, that means that your ad would not serve if the negative keyword appears in the query itself. So whenever there's a term or a phrase you don't want to show up for, you can throw that right in there and then your ad wouldn't appear. Uh, Thomas, a little bit more about PPC. You, you asked, can you track PPC through a sale? The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, this is why installing Google Analytics today is so vitally, vitally important. Within your Google AdWords account, um, at the very top of the page under Tools, you'll see the, the option and ability to um, create conversions. And that conversion is what you put on the order finished page, one of uh, design site contents page. You'll put it on the order finished page to ensure that um, when someone gets to that page after the one page checkout, um, it will be registered. This is vitally, vitally important for monitoring your ROI. You really want to make sure that um, you're, you're seeing a return on ad spend and that you're just not bringing in a lot of traffic without seeing um, where it's coming from. Um, to follow up with John about PPC and the services and shopping feeds, I'll talk about um, shopping feeds a little after SEO to give some other people a chance to talk. But John, to follow up with you about PPC as a service, is that I, uh, I looked up specifically the services denied for Google Shopping. And they include product bundles, um, online services such as financial or downloading. And this is maybe likely the case for you is business services, including lock slips, plumbing, or with e-commerce, consulting. If you offer um, IT setups or any type of consulting, instead, you'll want to be using PPC, the two lines of text. This allows you to target keywords about business consulting, IT, or whatever the service you may be offering rather than Google Shopping. Um, Google Shopping as a uh, product aggregator is kind of very similar to Amazon. You're likely not going to find a, a plumber onto that resource, so that's why you have to use a slightly different type of advertising model. Both are amazingly effective um, for what they're doing, and your vertical will probably recognize that as well. There, there can be things that you can offer and others that you don't. Um, so just try to focus on what the best fit for you when starting with paid advertising is going to be. So, John, if, I, if not, shoot us an email too as well. We'll follow up with you uh, if you want a further explanation of what you can be doing as well. It looks like we've got quite a few SEO questions as well. Did yeah. there one want to? Uh, sure, I can start out with a question from Cindy. Uh, she said, I heard that Google does not use the keywords tag anymore, but still uses the meta description. Is this true? So a little more info on that. Cindy, uh, Google actually doesn't read the meta keywords or meta description tags. Um, the keywords tag really doesn't serve much of a purpose at all anymore since it doesn't show anywhere. Uh, but still having a good list of keywords around is great for your own reference. Just don't worry about actually inputting them um, because, like I said, they don't show up anywhere and uh, Google doesn't read them. So the description tag does still show up in the search results, though. That means that customers are seeing it even if Google isn't paying attention to it. So that description tag is a great field to include some marketing messaging to encourage people to click your link instead of someone else's. 
phrases like free shipping and you know really enticing marketing uh, tactics like that can attract a lot of clicks. Um, and I also wanted to answer a question from Joe. He asked, uh, how do you know your search ranking when talking about SEO? So search rankings are something that um, e-commerce sellers obviously care about a lot. And Google's webmaster tools, if you have that set up, can show you your average ranking for certain keywords. But keep in mind that your search rankings are going to change all the time. Um, the SEO experts generally agree also that it's much more beneficial to focus on your site's improvements, like how much traffic you're getting and how much money you're making, rather than focusing on your search rankings. Just because they change constantly, uh, there are tons of competitors, and um, you, re you really want to make sure that you're attracting more customers and making more sales, and that should be your top concern rather than that ranking. I've also noticed that uh, a lot of ranking is personalized. I've had a few merchants call in and they're like, I'm number one now for this. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you need to log out of your Google yeah, account. That's definitely because true. Because <laughs> your, your results are being tailored to your search history. Very much so. And that comes into PPC all the time. Some people say, why are my ads appearing? Do we have the right keywords? Well, as often as that you're, you're searching for your own ads too often, and therefore Google thinks they're less relevant to you and therefore stops serving them as much. Um, uh, if I could talk a little bit about more about uh, paid search, we had two very similar questions about what percentage of my monthly income do you recommend to a startup um, to invest in PPC and feeds and uh, a reasonable monthly budget to, to show results? Um, two very similar questions. And when you're first getting started, look at, I, I hate this bloody question because I always want to say it depends, but start small. If you want to start, start with $10 a day daily budgets, I think that is a fine medium if you're just getting started. Uh, $10 a day is small enough that it's going to be $300 for the month, assuming you're hitting your daily budget and allows you enough money to have some flexibility. I said earlier, you don't want to be overspending and you don't, you really need to be tracking this information. So rather than starting to potentially waste or uh, spend ill-advisedly uh, $20 a day, start with 10. Best thing about both of these paid advertising models is that you can go in and change your bids and daily budgets whenever you want. It's just a small click. It's, you don't pay uh, it up front. Um, so if you're finding a lot of success or you're not, you can very quickly lower, um, lower those bids. Um, I can keep talking about, oh, there's another one about shopping feeds, if I may, I'll just wrap it up. Uh, John and Jeff, you asked about uh, what are shopping feeds. Once again, I apologize for not being very clear. Two great resources to find them, uh, support.volution.com. You'll be able to find out uh, in further explanation what I blabbered through very quickly. Uh, but a data feed is just a spreadsheet of all your store's information. From the dashboard, if you go to inventory, import, export, and export your product table, that's, that's a data feed that Google Shopping will take. You just have to change the product uh, uh, title headers just a little bit. We call it product title. Google just calls it title. We've got product code, they call it ID. So what you'll do is you'll export your product information and then start to tweak the column headers a little bit to what Google specifies. But we've got a lot of great support documentation on that. So. We've also got a bunch of social questions uh, rolling in here. Uh, one of them from Brianna. What is the best way to get followers quickly if I just started a Facebook business page? This is a great question. Um, and the, my answer would be Facebook ads. Um, Facebook organic reach has slowly been declining, so the best way to kind of get people to start liking your page is to set up an ad campaign. Um, you can set your budget and your targets. You can target based on a variety of different things, such as what interests you know your audience might have or your potential customers might have, um, and set your daily budget. And um, you know, from there, people will start seeing your ads based on your targets, and you'll start gaining likes that way. Um, Narasima also asked about LinkedIn, which is a great question. Um, we don't really get too many B2B questions, so this is good. Um, the 80-20 rule, how does it work on LinkedIn? So basically, you know, when you're on LinkedIn, you can have your, your published posts or whatever, and then you can also join groups. And when you're posting groups, you want to make sure that you're posting, you know, relevant stuff to that industry. So, um, you know, take some, some newsworthy content and post it in the group. So it would help your, your fellow group members. Um, the 20%, use your own posts, your own blog posts or anything like that to post personally from your own page. Um, you know, that's the best way that I can, I can kind of break down that 80-20 rule, um, you know, that way. 
Um, I got a couple more SEO questions here. One should be a pretty quick answer uh, from Pete. He says, we've activated the SEO friendly URLs in Volusion, but this still creates paths like uh, the slash category s slash 107.htm, for example. And he's asking, is there a better way to do this in Volusion so that we have tidier URLs? And yes, there definitely is. Um, first of all, great job activating those SEO friendly URLs. That's a really important thing to have checked off. Um, that uh, URL structure is the standard that Volusion uses, and it's very easy to change that category to a phrase that more accu accurately describes what's on your page. Um, so you can change it to, for example, slash red mittens dash s instead of just slash category. Uh, that's a really easy thing to change that you can do in the admin area of your Volusion store, the same way that you would change your title tags, your meta descriptions, things like that that I mentioned earlier. And um, in the SEO section of the webinar slides, when that's sent to you later, you'll see a link to uh, the Volusion support article about how to change all of those fields. And one more thing, this is a really important question for SEO. Uh, somebody asked, what do you mean by a penalty? And are paid links not effective? So earlier I mentioned that um, not following the search engine's rules when it comes to earning links to your site can be really harmful and uh, can cause the search engines to put manual penalties on your site as well. So a penalty is basically when Google or another search engine recognizes that you've done something uh, that they don't like, like paying for a link, and they decide what they put on their search results so they can decide that they will not list you when someone searches for a product that you sell or something that's relevant to your site. And obviously you don't want that. You want to be listed as much as possible. So uh, in order to avoid upsetting the search engines, you just have to follow their rules. And they do have a very strict rule against paying for links. Um, paid links used to be a very common practice in SEO. Uh, they are not anymore because they're so frowned upon. They may be effective in terms of earning traffic to your site in the very short term, but Google will very quickly catch on to the fact that you're using that tactic and uh, will penalize your site and cause you to not show up in the search results. So don't do it. Don't even thinking about Just doing it. it. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> I remember like a year ago, um, there was a period of time where there were a tremendous amount of penalties being leveled mm -hmm. through Webmaster Tools, and we got so many requests for people like, just do some disavows, clean this up, and it was a very difficult task. So it is just not worth the risk. Mm -hmm. We've also got some other marketing questions. Another one from Brianna. Um, how can we add a blog to our site? Is there a specific article we should use? Volusion actually has this awesome tool. Um, it's called the Knowledge Base. And if you go in there, it's right on our website. You can type in how to set up a blog for your Volusion store. It'll give you a complete how-to guide. Um, you know, the first thing you want to do, obviously, is create a, a blog on a third-party site, um, you know, whether it's WordPress or Blogger or, you know, something else. And then you want to make it a subdomain of your Volusion store. I'm not going to get too technical with this because the guide is going to have um, you know, pretty much word for word directions on what you should do. So I totally encourage you to go on the website and look through that. An another alternative to a blog that, I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish, would be creating your own like resource library. Kavi referenced this earlier with her organic skincare client. So sometimes there, there are times when it might make sense to have some of that content living on your website. Um, but I think our team often uses blogs. Blogs are really great for producing content quickly and pushing it out there and having an audience. I guess there's one more question I, I would like to address. Um, Alexander asked, uh, how can we convert the visitors on our site into sales and how long to start having sales? I just wanted to, Alexander, point out that I think it was last Tuesday we had a conversion webinar. We should be getting out the recording fairly quickly. No. On Thursday. So that's going to be a good hour devoted to that topic. Um, as, long, uh, as far as going to how long is it going to be to have sales, uh, that's going to depend. There's too many variables for us to say uh, definitively. But you can start driving qualified traffic now, which means a sale could happen at any point. Uh, one last social question we had um, from Jennifer. What are the best keyword savvy social descriptions? Um, so basically what I was talking about before is you kind of want to go into your about section and think about keywords and, and your, your products and everything that you sell. 
um, what really, what kind of words really embody your store and your products, and just kind of fill those into your about fields. Um, there should be a short description on Facebook, a long description, stuff like that. If you really want to, you know, look, get involved in the keyword stuff, you can go into the Google AdWords if you have Google Analytics already, um, and take a look at some of the keywords that people are searching for, you know, products similar to yours and you know kind of fill them into a natural description on your social page. Uh, there's a question about um, tags in SEO. Marsha asked what tags is Google paying attention to for SEO. I mentioned that keyword tags and meta descriptions um, aren't things that Google particularly looks at anymore. Uh, but they do pay attention to a number of other things. For example, your title tag, um, and then the H1, which is kind of the biggest header that appears on any particular landing page. Um, and again, that's a tag that you can just manipulate within your HTML, um, super easy to do. And uh, we have information about that in our knowledge base as well that I linked to in our SEO slides. Um, so the title tag and the H1 tag, I would say, are the most important um, ones that you need to pay attention to for Google. And we'll actually have a product optimization webinar that I mentioned a little bit earlier. On Again, it's on August 11th, and um, in that webinar, we're going to be running through all of the different tags that you can change in your Volusion store in order of importance to the search engines um, so that you know exactly how to change each one and exactly how much time you, you should be spending writing each of those. A uh, question from Joe. How much does it cost per click for PPC, and uh, does that change often? So the cost per click for PPC is a bid that you will set uh, within your own campaign. That bid is how much you are willing to pay whenever a certain customer visits your site um, based on their ad. Um, that bid will change and you can set it at a different time. Um, and then Google will charge you up to that amount. If you bid 50 cents for a customer to visit your site, Google can only charge you up to that much. They may charge you 25 cents, they may charge you 30 but they know that you are willing to spend up to 50 cents for that qualified traffic and therefore um, that's what it is. Uh, there is something a little bit more complex called the AdWords auction of how often you will truly be changing, but it's really about the bid that you choose to set. And the resource I'll provide at the end about the keyword planner will give you the best idea about the keywords um, in your specific vertical and how much you'll be paying for them. So it's, it's gonna vary of course, but you get to set it yourself. You've got a lot of control in that situation. Um, there's also one from Glenn that I want to um, take to. Glenn, you asked, how often should you redo your sitemap? Um, the question to that is, you don't have to. Uh, under marketing and SEO, Volusion automatically updates your sitemap daily. Um, it's going to re regenerate it for you. So every changes that you make are going to be reflected in your sitemap um, later, later that day. Unlike maybe a former uh, platforms and things like that, you've had to manually create it, but Volusion takes that step away from you. So as, as you continue to add new products, in new categories, um, your uh, sitemap will be regenerated daily. And I mentioned Webmaster Tools uh, just briefly earlier. That's another thing that's good to have set up along with your Google Analytics account. And um, when you submit your sitemap to Webmaster Tools, that's uh, another great way to get Google to recognize each of the pages that's on your site and sort of your general site structure and navigation. Um, and that's super easy to do as well. It's literally just the click of a button. Uh, Alejandra, is there anywhere where I can learn more about how to use Google Analytics effectively? Yes, um, there's a ton of resources on the Volusion website. If you want to go to our e-commerce blog, um, there's a Welcome to Metrics. It's a, an analytics webinar. It will kind of show you what, what metrics are important for you to pay attention to, um, how to set things up. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of resources on the Volusion knowledge base, and then also Google puts out its own kind of instructions on how to install it and, and what metrics mean what. Okay, uh, Maureen had one about keywords and sort of keyword hierarchy. Um, she asks, for SEO, do the keywords have to be on each page, or can you have keywords that are relevant to the entire site? And uh, that's a great question for when you're thinking about the way to structure your overall site content. Um, so there will be some keywords, obviously, that are relevant to your entire website. But it's important to differentiate your lower level pages from each other so that you don't end up competing with yourself. 
So if you sell gardening supplies, for example, make sure that your home page includes keywords and content about gardening supplies in general. And then make sure that your rakes and your gloves categories each contain content that's more specific to rakes and gloves rather than focusing on, uh, again, just gardening supplies in general. Um, just, you know, when you're writing out your list of keywords, make sure that each one is particularly relevant to that page uh, so that people will get to that page specifically when they type in those keywords rather than just finding your site as a whole. All right. Looks like we're getting close to the hour here, so we're going to be wrapping it up. Um, as a happy reminder, you're going to be receiving these slides and a video recording in a couple of days, so you'll have all the resources that we covered here at your fingertips. Um, we also offer regular webinars, as we keep referencing these, but it's something we do all the time. And they're on all these sort of marketing topics, and we go a bit more in depth than what we did today. Um, some upcoming webinar topics include the product page optimization that Kavi referenced and crafting a social media strategy for the holidays. Um, that one will be on September 1st. All of our marketing webinars are absolutely free, and we encourage you to sign up for as many as you can. Um, our team also offers marketing services, so if at any time you want to outsource your marketing efforts to our experts, simply reach out to the number you see on the slide or the email on the slide. And again, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Um, we wish you and your store tremendous success. Happy selling.